Hello everyone, welcome to Parametric Planet. And in this video, I would like to show you how you can convert your Revit model objects or information into JSON format using BOM tool. This method is very useful uh, when you want to share specific information about specific objects rather than sharing the complete Revit model. So you can select those objects, convert those objects into JSON format, and then share that JSON file. Further, this file can be processed and the required information can be extracted. For this particular example, I will extract my floors and the columns, and then I will convert uh, my floors and the columns into separate JSON files. And then I will use those JSON files, and I will push the information into new Revit model. So this will show you how you can select uh, particular objects, and then you convert them, and you can uh, share that information with someone else and then he can further process that file and extract the required information. So the very first thing is to make a connection between your Revit model and the Grasshopper file using the adopter. I have already created the connection and I have also extracted my floor and the column objects using the pull component. I have already explained this workflow in my previous videos where I have explained how this pull component work, how you have to create the filter and how you have to create the types. You can check those videos. The next and important step is to create an adopter for JSON file because without this adopter, uh, your objects will not be converted into JSON format. To create that, uh, you can go to BOM tab and then you can choose this uh, adopter from adopter component. If you right click on this one and select an item, then you have to choose this file and file adopter. I have chosen this file adopter which requires a folder location and the file name. So I have uh, created two file adopters because I want to create two JSON files, one for the floor objects and one for the column objects. And then I have created this push component because we want to push these objects into JSON format. For instance, in our previous tutorial, uh, when we wanted to push our objects uh, into SAP or ETAPs, then we have created the SAP uh, adopter or the ETAP adopter. Similarly, in the Revit, if uh, we want to push our objects into Revit, then we have to create a Revit adopter. So similarly here, we want to push our objects into, uh, into JSON format. So we have to create this JSON file adopter. And then I have chosen this push type, this time delete then create. Uh, when you have an existing file in your folder where you want to save your JSON file, then uh, this option will uh, delete the existing file and we'll create the new file. I want to save uh, my column JSON file and the floor JSON file in this folder. At the moment, this uh, folder is empty because I have not pushed these uh, objects into JSON format. So let's do that. I will activate this push component, first the floor, and then I will push the columns. So now we check in our folder, both column JSON file and the floor JSON file has been created. Now in the second part, I will uh, import this information into another uh, Revit model. I have already created this empty Revit model. So I will uh, connect this Revit model with another Grasshopper file. For that, I will use uh, this connection settings. So I will update this ports, uh, which I have already done. I have created this new port so that uh, I can differentiate between my uh, previous model and this model. So I will press OK, and then the connection is already been made. And now the next and important step is to pull the information from the JSON file. So the workflow is the same. You have to create a file adopter because we want to extract information our uh, JSON format. So we have created the same file adopter with the file name and the folder location, and then floors and the columns, and then we want to pull the information from this, uh, this, these files. So if we check uh, the objects, we have not uh, pulled any object from these files. So that's why this uh, panel is empty. So I will create another panel so that we can check our floors and the columns. Now I will activate this pull to uh, extract the information. So now we have all the flow elements as expected. And now I will also uh, 
extract our columns. Our floor and column elements have been extracted from the JSON files. Now I will push these objects into Revit model. To do that, I will connect these objects with this push component. Now this push component will push these objects into new Revit file. So I will connect uh, first my floor elements and now I will activate this uh, push component. So it will push the floors into Revit model. So as you can see that uh, my floor elements have been successfully uh, imported in this new Revit model. And now I will do the same for my column objects. Now I will connect this one with the objects and I will activate this push component. And this will uh, import all the columns in this new Revit file. So as you can see that our columns and the floors have been imported in this new Revit model. So that's how uh, you can use this JSON format and you can extract the information and you can further use these files to extract the required information. You can also use the same methodology when you want to check the modifications in your model. What you can do, you can use your original model, change that one to into JSON format, and similarly do that also for your uh, modified model. And instead of uh, using your Revit model, just use the JSON file, just import those files, and then convert uh, those file again into BOM objects. And from those BOM objects, uh, you can check the differences and further you can also import in new Revit model. This methodology is not uh, restricted to just uh, Revit model. You can also use, uh, for instance, ETABS model or the SEB models. Uh, you can convert those objects into JSON format and further you can uh, use those objects for further processing. So that's all for this video. I hope you like it and I would like to see you in the next one. Till then, have a nice day and bye-bye.